they have a lot of guys of equal size and they really get after it defensively force a lot of steals. Twyman kicks to an open James Johnson. That's three for number three. They are one of the premier rebounding teams in the Northeast Conference, number one in the league. That's a three ball for Deontay Twyman. Russell Johnson, oh, good pass inside. For the layup, that's Vinnie Meyer. That sure was. And, and Three on the way, and good, Deontay Twyman again. Jumper goes for Belton Jones, the redshirt sophomore from Philadelphia. Harrison to Azatam. James Johnson, got it! And again, inside out in the three-point line. That was good basketball right there. Good kickback by Azatam. It's playing to start this game. Johnson again. He got it! Unmentioned. 11 first half points for James Johnson. Johnson he gave it. James Johnson left open. Wow! Talk about a home rim. 14 for JJ. Oh, with family in the, in the crowd. Pumped up. Good defense here. Dave Johnson has stepped up. Long three goes for Anthony Myers. Just his sixth three-pointer this year. Average over 15 points a game. Runner for Karan Abraham. He had been quiet. Ronda bring him hard at the line. The line they time. played great. They made a lot of shots. So Robert Morris just wants to hang around now. Johnson spots up and fills up. Great call right there. Is he thinking that Deontay Twyman and Johnson got open looks? Wow, what a friendly roll tonight for James Johnson, who has 16 points to lead all scorers. James Johnson. Oh. <laughs> he can't miss tonight. 18 points in the first half. One of those nights right now. Get it to James Johnson every time down the floor. To win the league this year, Quinnipiac. Robert Morris was picked second. James Johnson falling down. 20 points in the first half. His career high is 28. Inside look and a good finish by Lawrence Bridges. Johnson finds Ruddy. That's a combination they've seen a lot over the years. Yeah, you know, as great as Johnson has been shooting the ball, that might have been the most important play he's made tonight because other guys are going to have to step up. He's going to start getting crowded. That was a perfect delivery, and it gets the confidence of Ruddy going. Going to be at led by 13 of the first half. Now just five. Make it two. That's a three ball for Russell Johnson. More than seven at the half with the type of shots that they made and how lethal they were, especially this guy. Oh, James Johnson, halftime, snap time. <laughs> Came right out. Twyman spots up. He got it. Getting the three point shooting to start the second half. Stepping into it, draining it. Dave Johnson with four. Dave Johnson, 11 points for Twyman. Karan Abraham. That's what we've been waiting for. Turning the corner in the pull-up elevation of Karan Abraham. He is fun to watch the way he can get up. Locker now to him. Justin Ruddy hitting the offensive glass and one. That is classic Ruddy right there. Off the curl. Williams misses, Wallace puts it back, and he's fouled. Abraham can't get free. Quinnipiac is really doing a good job on him. Long three, good. Dominique Langston, a 31% shooter from Johnson. Here's Abraham. Can he get free? Y'all, they're split. Come on, Abraham. Hey, he's listening. James Johnson. Do not leave James Johnson if you're guarding him. It's a great pleasure. All right, fellas, and James Johnson, by the way, was cramped up. They stretched him out during that last timeout, and if he's not back in there now, he will be momentarily. Back to you, Dave. Well, Paul, he's feeling better. Johnson hits the shot, and he has tied his career by 28 points, six rebounds tonight as well, and two assists, and the lead is back up to 10 for Quinnipiac. Belton Jones hits it. Tim, I think the president had a, a, a good point before about the Rhode Island win as, wow. James Johnson cannot be stopped. What a game. 
Abraham breaking him down. All right, to nine right now is Robert Morris. And Robert Morris... Theron Williams for three. That's good execution. A little down, cross screen, down screen, and it's the line. If, if Ruddy touches it. Yeah, can't let him do that. A great pass, though, by James Johnson. We talked about his scoring. Well, that time, the key play of this game was the pass by James Johnson. Nice basket inside for Russell Johnson and a timeout called by Andy Connecticut on Saturday. Gary Wallace's three is good. You have a feeling Johnson could make about 30 in a row right yeah, now. Yeah, he's not, this is gonna, don't go home, just stay here and just shoot all night. <laughs> But it's a nice job by you, Dave. <laughs> I think he'll forgive me. 38 tonight for Johnson. Twyman will dribble out the clock. Kudabiak wins it 69-61. The 38 points tonight by James Johnson, the most by an NEC player since Joey Munweiler at 39 here on NEC TV against Monmouth back on February 28, 2009. Back to put a wrap on it. After this, you're watching Northeast Conference basketball. Quinnipiac victorious over Robert Morris, 69 to 61. And Paul Dottino is standing by with our Ruby Tuesday player of the game. We had a great performance tonight, James Johnson. Well, thanks so much, Dave. And between James and I, we scored 38 points tonight. And I didn't score any. James Johnson with those 38. That's the highest by an NEC player this year. Also, your career high. You only averaged 16 a game coming in. So what made tonight so special? And why was it done with a variety of shots like it was? Last year, we lost to them on this court, 52-50. And I had that score like burned in my memory ever since we lost. So I took it on the off season to work hard, and I just, this game was personal to me, so I had to come out and lead by example. Now, with 20 points in the first half, it was obvious they were going to try to do something different. What did they try to do you, do you in the second half, and why wasn't it effective? They tried to trail, trail me like tighter, so, and stay down on, like, on my pump fix. So I just tried to like, be versatile, like read what the defender was telling me to do, and I was like listening to my coaches to tell them, because like, they was running at me at the three-point line, so I just wanted to pump fake and do a little bit more. Now, it was about an hour before the game, Coach Tom Moore told us that Justin Ruddy was cleared to play tonight, about a week or so before he even he thought. Yeah. So tell me about what was going on in your guys' minds. You know, Willis Reed has that, that legendary game back in the 1970 finals yeah. when he came on the court. Okay, yeah. so tell me what was going through your mind at that point when you found out he might be playing. We was actually in the training room, and um, Justin Ruddy listened to Michael Jackson before the game. So he put on the, um, the CD and they started playing and they jumped up on the table and started getting taped. I was like, nah, it's not happening. It will, it's read. And then Ruddy got, he ready, put the jersey on and that just got me excited even more. Okay, so finally, what does this win over the defending champions mean for you guys? Because clearly LIU right now is in first place in the conference, but you guys still seem like you want to make a lot of noise. Well, that gave us some closure from like from last year and that just probably like, it's going to get the train rolling because we've been like, having like a little tough stretch without Justin. So this is probably gonna like boost our confidence just because like they did defend the champions and they did defend the champions until somebody beats them. So I think that they still the top and I think we just need to come out and play hard. Well, if this train keeps rolling, you're gonna be the coal in the engine. I guarantee you, James, Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you. All right, fellas, back to you. Okay, Paul, Tim, that was one of the great performances we've seen ever on NEC TV. Yeah, no, James Johnson was just a spectacular. And if James Johnson can play well, he doesn't have to play that well. But in Justin Ruddy gets back in the form, Quinnipiac could really be a factor down the stretch in the conference. Once again, our final score, Quinnipiac 69, Robert Morris 61. Join us Saturday for an NEC doubleheader as LIU takes on Monmouth. The women's game tips off at 11.30 a.m., while the men take the court at 2 p.m., please check your local listings. This telecast is a copyrighted production of the Northeast Conference and was produced in association with P.S. Wolf Media. For Tick Capstraw, Paul Dottino, and our entire crew, this is Dave Popkin saying so long from Hampton, Connecticut. Bobcats win it by eight. Good night, everybody.
time now for one of our favorite segments, Holding Court with Tim Capstraw. Somehow, Tim still looks the same age as he did 11 years ago when we started out this program. Deontay Twyman, you're one of the great high school football players in the history of football. You threw, threw 80, I mean 80 touchdown passes. Explain to me why you didn't choose to play football in college. Well, uh, all through my high school football career, I was recruited heavily to play quarterback by a lot of Division One programs. But um, as my career went on in my senior year, a lot of the big bigger Division One schools that were recruiting me wanted me to move and play receiver. And if I wasn't going to play quarterback in college, I didn't want to play football at all. So that's when I made my transition into basketball. Well, the transition to basketball has been terrific here at Quinnipiac, but it's been quite, quite a bit of a long road here. You originally went to Ball State. Take us through that. Well, yeah, I committed to Ball State my senior year, and um, I played my freshman year there under uh, Coach Billy Taylor, although I was recruited by um, Coach Thompson, whose brother is actually at Georgetown now. Right. And um, after that year, I transferred and I uh, went junior college for a year, year at uh, Paul Community College in Florida. And then uh, I got started getting recruited by the coaches here, and uh, that's how I made my way to Connecticut. Well, you know, I know you're a history major, but some important history happened last year against this team, Robert Morris. T talk to me about the atmosphere and what you guys learned from that championship game against Robert Morris. The atmosphere, the atmosphere here for this game was crazy last year. We had almost all the fans, and it was actually, I believe, over spring break or right after spring break, so we didn't have a lot of students here, but uh, a lot of the local kids who go to school here made their way back, and uh, we had a great uh, showing for the fans. Um, we ended up a little short, but uh, all year long, uh, getting ready for this year, that's been our motivation. You know, that game coming up two points short, and, um, you know, it's just been one goal from, from then on, um, just trying to get better, to be three points better than last year and get back to, to where we were. Do you think the fact that you don't have one of your star players, Justin Ruddy, do you think that could actually help you guys come, uh, come tournament time? Yeah, I think it does, actually, because um, not having him, it gives a chance for a lot of our younger players like Jamie Jackson, Ike Azatam, Raheem A. Thompson, a lot of our front court guys. It gives them, you know, time to grow. And uh, although we're going through a little tough stretch, um, you know, I, I, think, I think this is making us better as a team because once we get ready back, you know, during crunch time later in the season, uh, we'll, we'll be back to where we were. All right, quickly, just give me a Super Bowl pick. Uh, I'm going to say Packers. All righty, Deontay Twyman, this is Tim Capstra, and court adjourned. A subdued holding court tonight. The capper turning into a serious journalist. Nice job by Deontay Twyman. He had eight in the first half.